Hi. All right. Well, I just watched a silent film. I said that I would try to find a Theta Barra silent film. I did. <laughs> so the silent film is called A Fool There Was. It was released in 1915. It's over an hour. And, um... Let's see... So... The film is based off of a play, which is based off of a poem. And when I was watching it, because at the beginning of the film, you have a title card that reads like a poem. And I'm thinking, well, this poem sounds familiar. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> and, and also when it starts out, when you have the actual, it starts out like a stage production. You know, it opens up. And it's, it's really cool how they did it. And um, so the play is titled the same way, and the poem is The Vampire by Rudyard Kipling. No wonder it was familiar. I'm a huge fan of Rudyard Kipling, so... But when it's a different title than the, yeah. So, the play is by Porter Emerson Brown, which, let's see, let's see, what else did he do? Okay, there's a lot of um, silent films that were based off of his plays, so <laughs> we're not going to get into that. But his name did sound familiar, so that's probably why. So 1909 Broadway play. It's not just one of those plays that is a Broadway play based off of Rudyard Kipling's poem, The Vampire. So this was a controversial film. Well, it was considered controversial because of risque things, like, for some reason, a... Uh, a title card saying kiss me you fool I don't know why that would be but apparently that but now Theta Barra if you <laughs> um she made her career being known as a femme fatale um, the only other one that I have talked about who was considered femme fatale was Nita Naldi. And, um, but the most famous is, of course, Theta Barra. Her most famous was role was as Cleopatra. We've seen all the pictures. There's only one little clip that survived from that film happens um so now before you get the idea that this is one of those um mythical type no <laughs> you have to understand the writings of Rudyard Kipling <laughs> He, he's not Bram Stoker, not by a long shot. Rudyard, when he, um, because I have his horror stuff, and when he did his writings, it was a little more creepy than um, Edgar Allan Poe. He, he knew how to get to the psyche. <laughs> Edgar did his share too, but so here's the thing about so let's talk about Rudyard for a second here. When we talk about 
vampire, we always think of the mythical creature. Okay, I want you to step away from that. Okay, just like with um, Edgar Allan Poe, he wrote a poem called The Valentine. It has nothing to do with love and romance. He's like, you guys are getting cheated out of your money for flowers and everything that nobody's going to care about. He says it's a pyramid scheme. You know, <laughs> whole holiday is a scheme, which I agree with him. But this is coming from a single person, so whatever. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, a lot of, that that's what the whole thing is about. You hear a word like vampire or valentine and you think it's going to be about one thing. And it's not. So keep that in mind. It's not always about that. So, um... This particular movie has two titles. Um, I was looking it up, and there are um, posters. You find The Fool There Was, and there's also ones that say The Vampire, or, and, and underneath it, it will say The Fool There Was. In this particular film, you have John... Schuler, and I hope I'm saying that right. I'll, of course, put everything underneath. So you have John Schuler. He is a well-known lawyer in Wall Street. I mean, he is successful. It does drag a little bit. It takes a while to set up the character. You do get a character development, but it takes a while. You get like 12, 15 minutes in, and it, it just kind of drags. You know, you meet the family, you meet this, and it's like, okay... TikTok here, you know. Let's let's get into it a little bit, you know. You're like, but I think that's the impatience of these days. I think back then it it wouldn't matter. You're like, oh, you know, you meet the mom, you meet, you see the um, how they interact with each other. You get to see him with how rich he is, and so. <laughs> but it does seem to drag a little bit. But that's just me. Um, he receives a message saying that he needs to go to London. And originally he was going to take his family. Well, it turns out that his wife's sister gets really sick. And so the rest of the family decides to stay with her. And so he goes by himself. This is where he's on the ship. And he meets the Nabera's character, who is just known as the woman. Also known as the vampire woman. Okay, so they meet up. And she uses her charms and seduces. This is where the femme fatale thing comes in. She seduces him, becomes his mistress. Okay, remember what I said about Rudyard Kipling's whole vampire thing? Okay, she's not an actual vampire. It's not like she bites his neck or anything. <laughs> no. Rudyard saw, you know, he used the word vampire in another way. So she seduced him and totally destroyed his life. And so his career starts to collapse. People around him starts to hate him. You know, they, they start to walk away from him. And the family, you know, he, she isolates him, basically. He, he has no family anymore. And he wants to go back to his family. She won't let him. And she played the part magnificently. I mean, um, it, a, a little too well, <laughs> um, but, and of course you had at some point where the, the wife tries to get him to come back and, and he's just so broken that he doesn't want to, and, um, And then he, you know, she's just 
So that's what he meant by vampire. And um, she just sucked his energy. And um, it was kind of like, oh, what was that one? The Haunted House uh, by the same gentleman who... Well, I critiqued, because I know I did a few haunted house, haunted castle, haunted, but there was one that I talked about, and I said that the haunted aspect is more psychological. So, but I remember that one, and it was about the, the gal that she had a history, and anyway, um... I'm sure some of you will remember, if you follow my silent film critiques, you'll remember. I, I know that it was um, um, recommended, and I critiqued it. So anyway, yeah, a lot of times it's it's the double meaning, um, like with the vampire here. So... So, and that also is the whole fool there was. He was the fool because he let himself be roped into her charms and his life was destroyed. And, um, apparently... Now, on stage... The actress was Catherine Kaled. She was oh maybe there was a name for her. She was known as the Vampire, not Vampiress. It was the Vampire. Um, and in the play, the Vampire was known as the Woman. So Catherine was her character's part was known as the Woman. So I got it mixed up. Um, the star of the play was a gentleman by the name of Robert C. Hillard, and he was very well known, uh, he was a well-known actor of his time, and apparently they said that he was known in film, but it's not confirmed. He had, apparently he had no connection in the film industry. So, uh, the producers were keen to pay tribute to their literary source, having a real Actor read the full poem to the audience before each initial showing and presenting passages of the poem throughout the film and in inner titles. So, in the title cards. So, if I'm reading this right, when it was shown, they would have someone. Um, Or maybe not. Maybe it's just in the play itself. I didn't see anyone actually do that. I didn't see anyone actually reading it. I just saw the... But anyway. And here it says, Bearer's official credit is even the vampire, and for this reason the film is sometimes cited as the first vampire movie. In the film, as in Kipling's poem, the term is used metaphorically as a character is not literally a vampire. Like I said. <laughs> I didn't even read this part, so... <laughs> okay. There were a few publicity stunts for this film, so that it could be, fil it could be shown in certain areas. And, um... <laughs> I guess that they said um, Theda Barrow was 
like an exotic actress when she really wasn't, and that's Hollywood for you. Even back then, they were doing stuff like that. <laughs> this was back in 1915, so. Okay, so May Allison was in this film. Seems like she was a well-known World War One um, actress. The, I think this was her. F this was her first on-screen appearance. So those of you that are um, May Allison fan, I didn't even notice that. It's me not paying attention. Um, part of the film takes place in the United Kingdom. It did not pass British Board of Film Censors. Because <laughs> apparently the relationship that went on in the film um, but later it was approved, so it doesn't say how much later. Uh, the film contains scenes set in England and Italy. The entire movie was filmed in Florida. And... Let's see. It doesn't really say, I mean it, I tried to find where it had like a um, reception or anything. It, the only reception is Britain, you know, because of the so-called, you know, adultery. <laughs> That's bad. Well, it was back then. Now it seems to be a national pastime. <sighs> I, I don't really approve of it. I think it's awful. There's this thing called you can break up instead of doing that, but... You know. <laughs> That's my two cents. Anyway. So... Apparently, I can't find where... Oh, wait, 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 wait. It is, it is available for download. Um, you can find it at the TCM movie database. <laughs> Apparently it's <laughs> saying it wrong in that other one. Oh, heavens. <laughs> the full film is on YouTube. Um, there is also a recording of Robert C. Hillard, if you go on um, Wikipedia, there is a, an external link of Robert C. Hillard recites passages from the play, or you can go on YouTube, it looks like it just goes there, a recording made in 1911. So it's probably off of a, um, a disc. I love listening to those. I, I've listened to, um, John Barrymore. I, I love listening to the Shakespeare ones. So I'll have to look at it, listen to that. I've also listened to Lily Elsie because I've restored a bunch of pictures of Lily Elsie. She had a beautiful voice. So, so anyway, there's a um, lantern slide plate for the film, Robert Hillard's. Um, is there... Give me a sec here. Maybe not. Oh, it's just a, it's just a poster. So just another poster. So anyway, it is available for download, free download at Internet Archive. You can also see it on YouTube. 
Um, there is uh, Robert C. Hillard. I'll, of course, put all the Broadway stuff in the description. And, um, but, like I said, it's over an hour, a little over an hour. And um, it has two, it's a, a Fool There Was is based off of a play that's of the same title, which is based off of a poem by Rudyard Kipling, which is titled The Vampire. A little confusing, but... <laughs> and of course, the vampire is not a mythical creature. That's Bram Stoker. <laughs> Let's not get him confused. <laughs> And it was released in 1915. Um, oh, I didn't see this. In 1918, there was a five reel version. So apparently there's two versions of it. So, so there's a little bit of a longer version, it looks like. The little over an hour, the 67 minutes is a 1915 release. So the longer version would be the 1918 release. So, but... Yeah, that's a Theta Bear movie. <laughs>